Hey, thanks for joining us for midweek. I'm really excited to be here with CJ today. CJ is our student minister and does a great job. And we're going to get to talk about emotions uh, having to do with grieving and loss today. So I'm really super excited about being here today. I'm super excited, Chris, as well. Excited to be here with you, our fearless leader, the one leading us into the glorious future. Um, so uh, what's one word that you would just use to describe your emotional state right now? I'd say I'm kind of mellow right now. I've got a lot of things going on. A little anxious, a little excited, just a kind of a mixed bag. How about you, okay. CJ? I would say the one word to describe me right now is just probably excited. Uh, fall is my favorite time of year. Um, my kids are just super pumped about everything going on. Um, things in student ministry are, are flowing really well and kids are inviting their friends. And uh, so I, I'm just excited for, for the future and where everything is headed. Mm-hmm. Cool. Cool. I'm mixed. I've got a root canal going this week. So I've not ever had a root canal. I've had teeth extracted. Also, I've got we have a funeral. One of our members has passed away and and so I'm kind of sad about that. Um, I was excited today. We we got a new stove a few weeks ago and it was dented and so we got a new stove or the replacement stove that's in good shape. So, so it's just kind of a mixed bag overall. But like you, I'm enjoying the fall and, and just the beautiful weather and the change of season. Mm -hmm. So I'm all over the place. That's fair. That's fair. So I think we're talking about, uh, you know, you mentioned mm -hmm. one of our members passed away. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's always an incredibly difficult, difficult thing uh, mm -hmm. for their family. Today, mm -hmm. we're talking about grief. Um, what's, what's a good passage of scripture that you think uh, would apply to, to that topic when we're talking about grief and how to handle all those emotions that go along with that? Well, today we're going to look at Luke chapter 7, verses 11 through 16. But before I do that, are you a, an emotional person or are you logic driven? CJ, I would say I'm I'm pretty emotional. Um, I I tend to uh, I guess wear my heart on my sleeve from time to time. Um, I I definitely have a logical aspect to me, um, mm -hmm. but I would say that that I'm more emotional. How about you? Well, I think I try to be a logical person, but still, even when I'm trying not to be emotional or I was raised kind of in a less less emotional environment. I try to be a head person and and not as much a heart person, but 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 actually want to be more of a heart person. It's it's yeah. I'm still emotionally driven a lot of the time. I need to mm -hmm. step back and and respond rather than react. And so mm -hmm. I think all of us, I mean, have to acknowledge our emotions and what's going on. So I think that today's study is going to be pretty important for us. So do we want to go down to Luke 7, 11? What did, mm -hmm. You'd already answered that question, but folks that are online with us watching this, you know, ask yourself that question. Are, am I more emotional? Am I more logical? And, and truly, we're both. Higher percentage, lower percentage, something like that. Let's look at Luke 7, verses 11 through 16. And I believe I'm going to read. So soon afterward, Jesus went with his disciples to the village of Nain, and a large crowd followed him. A funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate. The young man who had died was a widow's only son, and a large crowd from the village was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it, and the bearer stopped. Young man, he said, I tell you, get up. Then the dead boy sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. 
Great fear swept the crowd, and they praised God, saying, A mighty prophet has risen among us, and, it, and God has visited his people today. Our first question into to thinking about this is, have you ever gone through a time where you felt like God didn't see you? And what was that like? Um, definitely. Uh, I think um, there, you mentioned Sunday that you were a, really homesick at church camp. Mm -hmm. um, for me growing up as a kid, man, I was just homesick all the time. Um, when I went to school, when I went to church camp, even things that I enjoyed, I, I had a lot of anxiety and homesickness. Um, and later in life, that, that caught up to me in, in my in my early 20s. I really went through a time of depression. And mm -hmm. in that time, there was a, a real grief of, you know, um, is God still caring for me? Is he still mm -hmm. there as I'm, I'm dealing with with this grief and this depression and, and these emotions that I'm going through. Mm -hmm. How about you? I think so. I've, I've had a, a, what I would call a dark night of the soul. Um, I had something like that as a teenager when I was really questioning the existence of God and did I really believe what we believe and had, had, had come to a, a, a saving faith, my own personal faith. And then, as a uh, as a minister, I had a dark night of the soul where things weren't going the way I thought they would. It was here at First Christian over the time I've been here, and uh, it took about three months to work through that. It was uh, a very dark dark period. I I believed in God. I loved the church. I loved what I did, but it was still a dark night of the soul. And it seems when we uh, go through something with those that are very close to us, family members. Uh, we really uh, go through an emotional process, for lack of better words. Mm -hmm. What I what I love about this passage that you read is mm -hmm. um, Jesus approached uh, this this woman whose son had passed away, and he very easily could have said, "Hey." Don't worry about it. Just, just stop, stop crying. You know, it's all going to be okay. You mm -hmm. know, I'm going to raise your son from the dead. But instead, mm -hmm. he he paused in that moment and he just he felt the compassion, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, felt compassion for her and allowed her to just feel the grief in that moment. And I think that's mm -hmm. so important. He did that with Lazarus as well, even to mm -hmm. the point where he wept in John mm -hmm. chapter eleven with mm -hmm. Lazarus, and uh, and so I think. Man, what you said earlier to to acknowledge and feel our emotions is so critical, and it's something that mm -hmm. I think is often um, not taught uh, in our mm -hmm. in our society. We tend to push down our emotions, uh, so mm -hmm. I think that's that's crucial. And I love that that Jesus just shows that in these passages. Absolutely, I I am in complete agreement. I think being present in the moment is super important and experiencing those tears and grief and crying which which i do sometimes i'm just going down the road and, and a, a song touches me and i will cry believe it or not i know that's hard for people to imagine but i also think in surviving survival as as someone who has is experiencing the loss but is still alive I think we need to also have a, not a macabre sense of humor or a morbid sense of humor, but also a sense of humor, remembering those lighter times and the things that you enjoy the, about the person are super important as well, even in sadness, to have, to have those fond memories and laughter is important. Absolutely. To be able to admit that this is what I'm feeling and this is uh, an emotion that God gave me and I can feel that emotion and and s continue through my life in the midst of that emotion mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. recognize that God gave me that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to 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 remember I'm sad, but I can still remember those happy times and and continue mm -hmm. through life is is vital for sure. Mm -hmm. And typically What's, the person uh, so, Go ahead. 
So when when someone is is struggling with grief, what's what's one word of encouragement that you give to them in the midst of that grief? Um, I, yeah. I have a feeling you've helped a lot, a lot of people through that over over your ministry. Mm-hmm. For all. I would say that acknowledge their loss. I'm sorry you're experiencing this. I, my heart breaks for you, just like Jesus, you know, when he had compassion on them to feel that emotional pain and to identify with that. I've not experienced loss exactly like you have. No one has because we all experience it differently. But I am and deeply moved by your loss and acknowledge that. And, uh, uh, the other thing is that you know, feeling how you feel is normal. Everybody, but he uh, experiences that. I've been reading a book, uh, Surviving Survival. Yeah, I, I got it on BookBub, and it was just a random book that I chose to read about. And and one lady was talking about a child that she lost, and how she just felt it so deeply because it was a five year old, and and holding that child and it coming into her bed and uh, cuddling with her. That was a huge tactile loss for her. And working through that loss was uh, uh, a very difficult thing. And what she found solace in was mindless knitting because it took all her attention and it was a tactile of expression of getting over that loss. And you wouldn't think that knitting would be that therapeutic for some people walking or distance running or exercise, but working through that in some tactile way to replace that tactile experience that she lost in some way. never replaced a child. She continually grieved that loss, but that helped her get through that loss. So some things are a little bit unusual, but, but work. Absolutely. And finding what works for you personally in the midst of, of experiencing grief is so vital and so important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does knowing that Jesus dealt with so many emotions change your perception of him? And if so, how? For me, absolutely. Um, You know, one of the times that was a huge period of grief for us was when uh, we had a miscarriage Mm -hmm. and I remember uh, sitting in the, there are so many things about that experience um, Mm -hmm. that were difficult, Uh, you know, helping our kids understand that and delivering the baby. And, um, but I, I remember sitting in the hospital and feeling unexplained peace, knowing that, um, that Jesus felt grief as well Mm -hmm. and and the passages that we've talked about were huge Mm -hmm. encouragement and the the church gathering around us uh, Mm -hmm. to support us um, Mm -hmm. was just jesus confirming you know he feels our pain with us Um, so Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely uh and especially in that moment Mm -hmm. knowing jesus felt these same emotions was Mm -hmm. was huge for Mm -hmm. kirsten and i for sure Mm -hmm. how about for you yeah we We didn't lose a child, but we thought we were losing a child, our firstborn, Jennifer, and it was devastating, just devastating. I I was calling my parents, and I just couldn't complete the sentence, and um, it was just uh, crushing to deal with that. I was in tears, and it was very emotional. Did I have peace? Yes, but emotionally, uh, it just was you know, just a whole, I mean, Stacy had had a seizure, gone without oxygen, took her into the emergency room. It was just, you know, just a, a, a tra- traumatic experience. I could relive that moment in my mind easily. Um, when we lose people that we love, it's, uh, and especially the closer and the nearer or the higher we have of expectations of that new birth, just just make it that much tougher. And so how do you grieve that loss is, um, and you've got to work at it because there's no easy answers. Everybody's a little bit different. And even as a a spouse or uh, we don't process things because we typically are a little bit different. We 
process things differently. So, mm -hmm. but, but, and a lot of time, I mean, part of that is that sometimes we feel like God, you know, God, God isn't there and he's far away. And part of that is we live in a sinful fallen world and that's a simple answer, but, but re that's reality that bad things happen to good people. But, mm -hmm. but I think God, well, God's word says that there's a purpose and a plan and that uh, he will work things. He will work things, but not all things are good for the good, but not all things are good. And, and survivors you know, sometimes have survivor guilt or feel guilty even when they feel good because they've survived mm -hmm. after, after that experience. And sometimes we just have to move on without you know I, I see people get stuck and don't continue to do those things whatever it is to keep moving taking action and that's one of the skills survivors or those that develop re resilience have they mm -hmm. keep going in spite of how can we remind ourselves that God is with us and loves us even during tough times I'll let you answer this question first. I've answered all of them first here. <laughs> <laughs> I think, first of all, is just knowing that God is there, whether we feel him or not. Mm -hmm. I, we can question that because we don't feel that. But his word says he's always there. And uh, when I looked at Job, I did a study of Job this last uh uh, last the, toward the end of the summer, just a personal study through you version. And what impressed me about that study, and probably the first time I ever thought about it, because I, I always think that Job is left hanging. But in those last two chapters of Job, God questions Job. Where were you? What, what did you do? And what I did. And in that moment, God is present with Job, and his presence is enough. Whether we feel him, which we, we would rather do is feel him, mm -hmm. but, but knowing he's there and that he is enough, he's sovereign, he is greater than anything that we can imagine, and in that, I can take comfort, but, but it's a matter of faith. that I don't, I, I don't even think about feeling God. I think about knowing he's there. When I pray, God is God is there. When when I seek him, he provides himself there. Now I don't always feel him, but he's there. But that's a matter of faith. And I think that's over years of wanting to feel him and wanting to feel his presence. No, I I quiet myself and in that in the midst of that God is there wherever we are. How about for you? Mm -hmm. How do we remind ourselves that God is with us um, and loves us even through the tough times? I would say um, simple reminders in um, getting practical, writing notes or mm -hmm. um, putting things around and saying, you know, God is with you. And I, I think one of the, one of the biggest reminders um, that, that I would suggest to people that are grieving is just express yourself to God. Um, mm -hmm. You know, even when we come to God and we say, God, are you even there? Like, do you even care? Are you even listening? Mm -hmm. I don't feel your presence. Like God hears those. And just mm -hmm. being able to even express that to God uh, mm -hmm. is a reminder to ourselves that, God is there. He is listening and he wants, it's not a bad thing to, to ask those questions. God wants us to lay everything out before him so that he can, um, come in and, and be present with us. And so, um, practical things like leaving notes and then just, just talking to God about your emotions. Mm -hmm. He's big enough to mm -hmm. handle whatever, whatever we feel. And so just having those honest conversations with him, uh, as a cognitive way to remind ourselves that he is there and listening. So would you suggest journaling or talking out loud to God so you, it's more of a verbal auditory experience to help you focus and also to say it out loud so you can hear yourself? 
I'd say you whatever fits not? your personality best. Um, mm-hmm. You know, some some people are writers, and then they can go back and look at those and say, mm-hmm. "Oh, God was at work here in this situation." Mm-hmm. And and some people are, you know, more in the moment. I think that probably goes back to what we talked about earlier. Where are you more logical, or are you more emotional? Mm-hmm. Um, and just whatever fits your personality best. That's uh, so what I what I would say. How about you? What do you think? Well, or the physical act of writing versus typing on your computer, laptop, whatever. I would say whatever works for you. Like what you said, I was reading a devotion the other day where they talked about reading the scripture out loud, and I don't do that. I read silently, and I thought, mm-hmm. you know, I need to do that, and maybe I need to pray out loud just to hear myself process and to keep me more focused on what I'm doing because a lot of times there are people around me when I'm doing a devotion and I thought maybe I need to get away from everything and everyone and just do it out loud and see how that experience is. Yeah. I, I When I look at the widow of Nain and that funeral procession, wh- what I find in that story is here is a widow that doesn't have her husband's support in a uh, patriarchal, male-dominated culture, and she's lost her only son. So her means of support, she is destitute at this time. There's no hope for her. And when Jesus takes compassion on her, she he restores her economic uh, well-being as well as her emotional well-being. It doesn't mean that Her son didn't die or she didn't die before her her son did. It doesn't take any of that away. But Jesus revealed himself in that way. And most of the time, we don't see somebody raised from the dead. When when we die or when someone we love dies, they're dead forever. They're gone. And so uh, this is a little bit different than what we deal with today most of the time. Mm Mm-hmm. And now modern medicine heals a lot of people and saves them. But typically we don't recognize that as a supernatural from the grave type of saving like what we see here with Jesus. So it's a little bit different. For sure. Well, Chris, any final comments about grief or emotion or... um... Uh, Final practical thoughts for those listening? I think as we close, my my thought would be that through the dark night of the soul or whatever we've experienced, whatever we've survived through loss, can make us stronger if we are resilient, we persist in faith with God. There is a silver lining to the dark cloud. And, and we have to lean into God in that moment. And I think it's an opportunity to grow is how I've experienced it. It's how I w- want to work through things. I, I know that it lasts a long time, and sometimes we never get over it, but we get better for it. And so we, we may even continue to grieve all throughout our lives in some areas. How about for you? I would say don't be afraid of your emotions um, mm-hmm. and and express those and feel those and know that God gave us emotions to uh, encourage us to, to work through the difficult times in life. And, uh, and so feel those and don't give up. Continue to work through those mm-hmm. difficult times and, and keep going, keep going strong, uh, knowing mm-hmm. that, that God's got a plan um, mm-hmm. for you in the future. So, any practical application you think I'm thinking be in the moment know where you are emotionally would be one thing just you know how am I experiencing today what kind of emotion do I have what kind of emotional climate am I creating absolutely I would say for sure be in the moment and and Mm -hmm. acknowledge and feel where you're at um to practice that is so vitally important. There you go. Well, any closing comments? We've gone a, we've gone longer than I I felt like we would go today. So, 
We didn't really yeah, tease each have. other about stuff like I thought we would. I know. I mean, this we is a pretty were heavy topic. A more serious. I know. It's a little bit pretty heavy topic. You can't really make a lot of fun you know, in a loss type situation. But really, I think that some of that, when you remember those folks that we've lost and what we've gone through, then I think we've got to choose to be happy and choose to, mm-hmm. to laugh even through yeah. the, through it because uh, the gift of what we've had obviously we've loved and we've cared about and so we need to celebrate also that we've experienced them and and our love for them absolutely all right wrap us up young man all right well uh thank you guys for for watching uh we'll be back next week for midweek we hope that you'll join us in the chat section and that this is just a, an encouraging moment for you uh, in the middle of your week to just continue your faith. So uh, thanks for listening. Chris, any final thoughts? Nope. Hey, thanks for joining us. Come back next week. Uh, midweeks prepare, premieres at 7 p.m.